now that we've talked about some of the different ways of trying to address nonlinearities as well as trying to address non-constant variance, let's look at implementing some of these solutions in R. So the first approach we're going to try working with is taking the log of x, or in this case taking the log of the height variable. Let's take a look at a plot of the log height versus FEV, where we're taking the log of x. And let's see what that does. So we can see there that visually this didn't fix the problem. It actually made the relationship more nonlinear. Let's just fit a model that uses the log height to estimate FEV. And here's a summary of the model. If we want to interpret this slope, what would that tell us? When the log height increases by 1, the FEV increases by 7.82. Okay, and again, this doesn't really have a meaningful interpretation. Right? When we talk about height in log inches, it doesn't really have a meaningful interpretation to us. Now let's just look at the diagnostic plots checking the model assumptions, which we already saw this didn't really fix the problem. If we look at the residual plot first, we can see the relationship actually looks more curved than it was previously. We can see there's still increasing variability. And here's just the other plots. Let's, let's not spend time talking about those, but let's just note that taking the log of x didn't really solve the problem. Now, let's try taking the log of y, okay, or the log of FEV. So first, let's look at a plot of that. Here we're going to plot height versus log FEV. And now what do we see there? It actually looks like it solved a lot of the problem. Right? The relationship looks linear. Variation looks pretty constant. And let's take a moment to talk about why this might be happening. Now if we think of it conceptually, this makes sense. Right? As height increases one inch, okay, or as kids grow older in age, they grow taller, their bodies get bigger. And what happens to your lungs as your body gets bigger? As you're getting older, your body grows both vertically and horizontally, right? Your body's getting bigger. They're getting taller and they're getting wider. Okay, so the effect that getting older or growing taller has on lung capacity shouldn't be linear. It makes sense that it should be multiplicative, right? Every time you go a few inches taller, you're also growing a few inches wider, right? Your lungs are expanding vertically and horizontally. Okay, that's why we were seeing this exponential growth um, or this exponential relationship between height and FEV. Let's go back and look at that plot quickly. Right, so here's height versus FEV. We're seeing this sort of curved relationship. To me, that makes sense conceptually. As kids are getting older, their bodies are getting bigger, and their lungs are growing vertically and horizontally. Okay, there's a multiplicative, not a linear relationship. Back to that transformation. Taking the log of y, or the log FEV, looks like it solved all of our problems here. Let's fit a model that uses height to estimate log FEV. So there's fitting the model. Let's add that line to the plot using the AB line command. Again, it looks pretty good. It tends to go right through those. The relationship looks very linear now. Let's take a look at a summary of the model. Now let's talk about the interpretation of the coefficient, the slope for height. The interpretation would be when height increases one centimeter, the log FEV increases by 0.05. Again, when your height increases one inch, your lung capacity increases by 0.05 log liters. Okay, now if our goal is to build an effect size model, and say what effect does height have on FEV, this doesn't really provide a helpful interpretation. Right? It doesn't make sense to say what does height do to your log lung capacity. So it's not going to help us there. If our goal is to build a predictive model, this solution would work fine. We can use someone's height to predict their log lung capacity, and then we can back transform that prediction. Right? So we can take E to the estimated log lung capacity to get their estimated lung capacity. I just wanted to mention that here. Taking the log of y it seems to have solved our problems here, and it would be okay if we were building a predictive model. If our goal was to say what effect does height have on lung capacity, or what effect does height have on FEV, this solution isn't really going to work for us, as our model interpretation is going to tell us what effect does height have on log lung capacity, okay, which doesn't have a meaningful interpretation. Let's take a look at the regression diagnostic plots. To do so, we can ask for a plot of the model. Here, if we look at the residual plot, Right, we can see the red line, the smoother looks fairly flat. Right, the relationship looks linear. The scatter around the line looks fairly constant. Again, here's the QQ plot. This other plot, again, we said helps us see increasing variability. Right, the line looks fairly flat. Variance is constant. So I just want to take a moment to note that this worked really well. It fixed the linearity issue. It fixed the non-constant variance issue. And the only kind of real drawback was if we wanted to build an effect size model, right, if our goal was to interpret the slope of the regression, this isn't really going to work well for us. But if our goal was to make a prediction, right, to try and estimate what is someone's lung capacity, this is going to be a great option for us. 
Now let's take a look at some other solutions. I just want to go back to the original data, height versus FEV. And now I want to talk about fitting a polynomial. So let's try using height and height squared and see what that does. So to do so, I'm going to create a new variable called height sq, which is the height squared. And then I'm going to fit a model that uses height and height squared to estimate FEV. I'm going to call that model 3. If we ask for a summary, here's a summary of that model. And I just want to note here, we can also include height squared directly into the regression model that we're fitting, although we need to put a capital I and height squared within parentheses. And there's a whole separate video talking about fitting polynomial regression models in R, so you can take a look at that if you want a little bit more about the details of polynomial regression in R. I'm going to add that regression model that we just fit to the plot here, and I'm not really going to explain this code much, but what I'm doing is plotting the height versus the predicted and carry the estimated values from model 3. Okay, so the points along the regression line, and I'm fitting a smoother through that. So this kind of pink line here shows the polynomial model that we fit. Right? We allowed it to curve a little bit. Okay, and this looks like it's working reasonably well. It's at least capturing that relationship between height and FEV a bit better than fitting just the line. Let's look at the regression diagnostic plots for that. Here we can see, first if we look at the red line, right, the smoother that's fit to the residuals, it looks fairly flat, so it looks like this has addressed the nonlinearity issue, right? The relationship seems to be modeled well using the polynomial. What do we see about variability? There's still increasing variability. Variability is really high up here, it's much lower here. And it makes sense that this solution is not going to address the problem. The only way we can address non-constant variance in the y variable is by transforming the y variable in some way. Fitting a line, instead of fitting a line, allowing it to curve is going to do nothing for the variability on the y-axis. Okay, and here's the rest of the diagnostic plots. This next set of code I'm going to skip through, although you can look at it if you want. This just talks a bit about when you fit a polynomial model, you should actually work with um, centering the squared variable. And it talks a little bit about why you should do that and how to do that. Let's not spend our time there. The final solution we're going to look at is using a categorical version of the x variable. So here I'm going to categorize height. I'm taking height and I'm going to break it into categories of less than 50, 50 to 55, 55 to 60, and so on. So I'm going to create a new variable called cat height. Now we can make sure that that worked correctly. Here I'm looking at the first 10 heights. So the height of 57, we can see that's falling into category height category C. The height of 67.5, that's going into category E. The height of 54.5, that's going into category B, and so on. So it's often good to do something like this, just do a sanity check and make sure that your code did what you thought it was going to do. So I'm going to go into fitting a model that uses the categorical height. We're going to use the categorical height to estimate the FEV. And I'm going to call this model 5. So I fit that. Here's a summary of the model. And in previous lectures and in previous videos, we talked about interpreting the coefficients from this model. So I'm not going to spend too much time. I'll just say it very quickly. This 1.24, the intercept, is the y value when all x's are 0. Or in other words, it's the estimated FEV for someone in height category A. This coefficient here, 0.3875, tells us how does the mean FEV change for someone in category B relative to category A. Okay, so someone in category B, we'd expect their FEV to be 0.3875 higher than someone in category A. Okay, or we'd add these two together to get the estimated mean for someone in category B. Now what I'm going to do is draw on that model that we've just fit. So first, I'm going to put up the plot of our data again. Here's height versus FEV. Now I'm going to add some red lines in of the cut point for categories. This isn't necessary. This is just to help us visualize what's going on. Right, so height category A is 45 to 50 inches. Height category B is 50 to 55 inches and so on. Now I'm going to add in lines that show us the mean for each category. So for those in height category A, our model suggests the mean was that, um, what was it, 1.28? Oh, sorry, 1.2417. Right, so that's the mean for someone in height category A. We can draw on the line for category B. Here's the estimated mean for someone in category B, and so on, C, D, E, and F. So we can see, using a categorized version of x variables, another sort of workaround to dealing with nonlinearity. This does capture the relationship fairly well. We talked previously about the pros and cons of using a 
categorical version of the x variable. So I won't get into that here, but just a, a reminder that you might want to think a bit about that. And for the sake of comparing some of these different approaches, what I'm going to do is add in just the regression line with no transformations in black here. So that's the linear regression model that we fit just using height and FEV. And I'm going to add in the polynomial that we fit. So that was when we allowed it to curve a bit and use height and height squared to estimate FEV. So this is really just to compare and contrast some of the different approaches. And finally, one that we're not going to work with much in this course, but I did mention in the conceptual video and I wanted to show it here. We could also use nonlinear regressions, so things like splines, right? So these are fitting sort of smooth lines through the x and y variable. And I'm going to add one of those in here. And let's just zoom in on that, make it a little bit larger. So this just allows us to compare some of the different approaches to addressing nonlinearity. Um, and in the previous video, we talked about these conceptually, as well as the pros and cons of um, some of these different approaches. So that's where we're going to end it here. I'm just going to detach the data. Remember, as I said at the start of this set of videos, I'm working with attaching the data to make the code visually a bit simpler. It's usually recommended that you don't attach and you work with the dollar signs or other approaches to doing that. So if you do work with attaching, which I'm doing in these videos, it's good practice to try and remember at the end to detach that data. Okay, get it out of ours memory now.